Yeah, I recently posted a video about uh, oh, the cheap apartment tour in China. And if you haven't seen that video, I will link it. Right, and in that video, I showed you around one of my latest apartments in China. And I didn't mention quite a few things about that apartment. And, uh, the things that come along with it, whether it's expenses or the fact that, or, or other things. So I'll go into it right now. All right, so in that video, I talked about how much I pay per year for that apartment, which is actually pretty cheap compared to some cities in China. So the amount that you pay per year, or sometimes you pay per month, depending on where you live. Some schools, you pay upfront for the full year. That was the first time I've ever done that. And then some schools, you pay for the apartment monthly. That school that I was just at, I was recently at, they give you a month, you pay for the year and then a month pay off all that you paid. So if the apartment that you got was more than your housing allowance well then you will have to pay out the extra but if you match the housing allowance or below you still get your full housing allowance so that's a great thing that i that's what i love about living in china that you get a housing allowance well it actually depends on your contract too i always go for a contract where i either get an apartment sorted where the school provides the apartment or i go for i go for a school that gives a housing allowance what i've noticed in some tier one cities like shanghai beijing Guang sometimes you do not get a housing allowance at all but I pay for a year people pay one month yes and you should expect that because a tier one city this is a, a highly populated city that people want to live it's a, it's a very popular city that everybody wants to, they want to live in the cost of real estate is a little bit high not a little bit high it's extremely like way higher than usual so as I was saying some people pay what I pay in a year, they pay that in a month. So what ends up happening is that you have to share their living space. So the apartment that I showed you, I live by myself, all alone, in a two-bedroom apartment, in a city where the, the cost of the apartment is a lot more expensive, the cost of the rent is more expensive. You tend to have to, to share, whether it's to share one of the rooms or rent one of the rooms out, or that is not what I can, I didn't come to China to share with nobody. So that's why I look for contracts that you have the allow housing allowance and I always like to ask, you know, what's the expected rent I would have to pay and to see if the housing allowance will even cover the full rent. That's the other thing you have to look out for as well. Sometimes your housing allowance might not cover your full rent if you're getting a housing allowance. But I've seen jobs that do not even, they don't provide an apartment and they do not provide a housing allowance. So you have to, you have to be very careful about that. And if they don't offer that, there's always another job. You can always find another one. So don't stress about it. All right, so I want to go back to talking about the, the, the housing, the cost of the apartment with regard to it. It's actually not a typical price. Um, the previous city I lived at was the rent was a little bit cheaper and um i also paid i paid monthly and i got my housing allowance monthly so no 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 wait no i paid monthly but i got it quarterly so that was the other difference as well i got my housing allowance every quarter so those are so many things you have to kind of look out for like if you're now coming to china for the first time what kind of expenses you might have to you know consider i had to pay two months in advance as well so for for my previous apartment so and yeah the cost is not typical so where i lived in that two-bedroom apartment that i showed you that was about an hour outside of the city i consider the town to be very rural actually one of the most rural places like literally it was pretty much underdeveloped the year like a couple years before I got there or maybe a, a, just a year before we even lived there and li there was really no roads there was nothing no stores nothing so when I when I moved into that that area there was no railway station yet there was no railway they were building a railway line to it so the rent was actually much cheaper than if you were to go into the city and when you go into the city, rents would be like, so rents would have been 7,000 US for the whole year. So, and I'm guessing most likely you would pay monthly for that. Um, or maybe every six months. I know, I think in the city, they, you paid every six months. Now, obviously, you can ask for your rent to be paid every six months or a year, depending on what you negotiate. So that's the other thing too. You can negotiate your rent if you don't want to pay a certain amount. I did that as well. Right, so the amount that I paid was not, is not normal for that 
So I lived, as I said, I lived outside the city. So that's the other thing too. If you live in a, in, in a tier one city like Shanghai, if you move out of the city center, the rent is cheaper. You don't have to share, that sort of thing. But some teachers lived in the city center and then they took a bus, the school bus, to school every morning. To me, that was a waste of energy and a waste of time every day. You're losing like two hours every day, or two and sometimes three hours every day, commuting back and forth. And you have to wake up earlier, it's so much more stress. So I just lived about seven minute drive away from my apartment. I took a taxi every morning to work, seven minutes. If I took a bike, a bike, I would bike ride to work in 13 minutes, you know? So, and I, I'm not a very fast rider. So you have options with regards to living where you want to live when you choose to move to China or teach in China. Oh, the other thing too, the size of the apartment is not typical either. Some apartments are actually smaller, but the size, that's been the standard size for me so far, but for some people it's a lot smaller. And I even remember I showed you all the stairwell. There's a particular reason I showed you the stairwell. It's because one of my friends, my travel buddies, um, he was visiting, he ended up staying by me overnight. And when he was walking up the stairwell, he was like, oh my gosh why are your walls so clean i'm like what are you talking about <laughs> everywhere i've lived the walls have been clean white walls not dirty at all but he said when he lives in beijing so when he visited me he was like wait why are your walls so clean i can't understand it because in beijing where they live the walls have graffiti over them the the walls are dirty there's like flyers stuck on the walls and old flyers that they took off and then they they stuck back on the it's some it apparently was a mess he invited me to come visit him in beijing and i wanted to see because i'm like it just gives me an idea that you don't not everywhere is the same in china you have to remember you have to remember that whatever because he was shocked by what he saw in my just see just his stairwell and then we came into my apartment he was so shocked by how massive it is because i guess where they live it's much smaller much smaller space and remember it's beijing so a lot of people move to beijing for work a lot of chinese people a lot of foreigners they move to beijing for work so um this space you pay a lot more as well, as I said, for the space. All right, so the last thing I wanna cover is your apartment expenses. Now, depending on where you live, you might have little expenses or very, not at all. So the, I lived in three different apartments. Let me tell you about the first one. The first one, I had no expenses whatsoever. Not even electricity. I paid no nothing, because the school that provided that apartment, I paid nothing. Nothing. <laughs> I didn't pay for water, I didn't pay for gas, did I have a gas card? I can't even, I don't think I had a gas card, I paid for nothing, nothing, nothing. So that's, as I said, that apartment was provided by the school and it was attached, literally the building, the school buildings here, the apartments were literally attached right next door. So I would just take a shower and five minutes later I'm in work, you know? If so much, if more than, sometimes it's less than five minutes, two minutes, I'm already in, in class, in class teaching. So. That was my first apartment, no expenses. Second, a second apartment, it was like night and day. So this one, you actually had to find an apartment. So the one of the HR assistants helped me with finding an apartment. She, but this one you had to pay. You had to pay two months in advance. You had to pay. Uh, I was getting a housing allowance, so anything I paid, I was getting it back. Now, with regard to that, you also had to pay property taxes, you had to pay agent fees, you had to pay, I had to pay for electricity. Gas is very, very cheap. So you could pay three US for gas and it could last you six months. Cheap, gas is cheap. Um, electricity was about 20 US a month, if so much. Uh, oh, yeah, this is very important. I had to pay for heat. Now, how heat was set up in the second apartment, it was, um, uh, how to put it? So the heat, the 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 government the municipal government control the heat in that city so how it would work they would turn it on from november to march i believe and then you pay up front for all those months and then but they will turn it on a certain time every day so by the time you get home in the evening the apartment is already warm for you because the floors were heated i loved that 
the apartment was comfortable now the very first apartment that's the other thing i forgot to tell you they don't turn on the heat there was no heated floors it was just one unit in the living room and the rest of the apartment was freezing cold that's the one thing i hated about that apartment so it was very uncomfortable and i got sick i was always sick every time i got well again i got sick again but yeah but back to the second apartment that one was um yeah so you paid for the heat set amount for that period of time those months and they will turn on the heat a certain time every day and it will stay warm throughout the night and then by the time you get home in the evening it's perfect so i love that however remember before they turn on the heat it's actually pretty cold so you're kind of cold thankfully there are ac units that can do heat set, have a heat setting so that was the only thing that kind of kept you warm until they turned on the city heat right so once they switch off the heat now it's actually still pretty cold when they switch it off so you back to using the heat in the apartment as well so turning on the ac unit heating heat heating unit so that was the other thing now the third apartment i've moved to and lived in um there were also property fees however not as many and it didn't have an agent fee for the real estate agent there was no agent fee the expenses were a lot less however heat was more expensive because we turned on the heat we had control in our apartment we actually had the heating unit in our apartment and we had control over it so we were able to in our apartment turn it on when we felt when we when we felt like okay it's time to it's cold in here let's turn it on so that's how with that i found as though i found i used oh it was expensive it was expensive and then if you if you used a certain amount of energy you get charged for that too it was like ex that apartment like it seemed as though it wasn't expensive but shh, the heat every month i mean for me compared to what i had dealt with before i didn't feel as though it should have been that expensive but it was a more expensive city in general too, all right? But I can't imagine people who live in, in the actual city center. That's crazy. So that city that I, the city center that I was living outside of was Qingdao. That one, hmm, that was an interesting one. So if you have any questions about living in China and apartment hunting and what it's like, I'm not saying I know everything about apartment hunting. I'm just telling you what I've gone through so far and hopefully you can glean some information from it. And hopefully... If you're moving to China, this is helpful to you on what you can expect or the expenses you can expect as well. See you in the next one. Ciao.